around all winter, all night, or off and on during the night? Would that have been? So that's a really common sound for juvenile um, owlets. Mm -hmm. And if you had it through the winter, um, so. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, through the summer. Oh, so it would have been like if they were born in June. It continued up until it got really cold, and then it fit. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, let, let's talk later. But um, a, a lot of different owl chicks sound similar to that. Okay. Um, but, but there are some birds out there that sound like that too. In the night. So yeah. Nice. yeah. And what does the adult? What do they sound like? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You read my mind, John. Oh. <laughs> okay, so this is the male. So the male, he's got that low kind of six note, just hoot, 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 hoot. And the female, she's more delicate and uh, a better singer, a lot like, like Julie is, and, and has that whoop, whoop, whoop sound. Um, and then the, the screech is the, the, the little chick. So um, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so hope we filled the money jar up there. Um, this is close to uh, Eden Valley Guest Ranch up, up in the, the block of Mount Hole. On, on, uh, actually, it's on private ground that this nest is. And um, again, nesting habitat, we're going to continue with that. And this is a platform. Um, this is a natural platform. Notice the leaners, okay? Um, most people would walk right by this stand. It's fairly close to the road, but the most important thing about this whole thing is this old guy right here. This old, I think it's a larch tree, western larch that died, and you know, this is a, a fairly old tree that broke off here. Um, this is a, a northern flying squirrel hole. I put my peeper in there um, and it almost came out of my pants because all of a sudden I see this thing in my little my viewfinder and uh, it scared me as much as I scared him. Um, and that northern flying squirrel was in there uh, the year that this nest was not active. And uh, but anyways, this nest um, broke off, has a cavity in it, similar to a big salad bowl, um, the perfect habitat for a great gray, and and fairly close to open meadows. Um, this is also, if anybody knows, uh, uh, the Wilcox fire. Um, this is close to the Wilcox fire as well, so a lot of young regenerating uh, stands, so more open that they can hunt, perch in, perch on limbs like this, and, and hunt uh, in, into old fire scars as well. This, most people would walk right by, right? You don't really see anything. Notice this right here. Okay, kind of a solid bowl platform dish here, and that's that, that's one outlet that that flinched there that year. And you know, go back to to this. You don't get this very often. These old guys they don't last very long. 
And um, so these are really special for us to hold on to in the landscape. If you're a homeowner or something like that, um, some people would like to see this in their firewood pile, but um, I would rather see this standing because I'm thinking this is probably two to 300 year old tree, if not older. It broke off about 65 feet up. I could never get, um, after they fledged, I could never get my peeper up because it was so tall. Um, but they fledged in that and um, were successful. So this is a really special uh, tree on, uh, out in the forest that you know, we like to, like to retain because that's what you get if, if, uh, if they're able to stand out there over time. Wow. Let's talk a little bit more about nesting habitat. Uh, firewood cutter, this is really good firewood, right? Um, and I, I joke when you say that because um, I see it time and time again. And not that every tree that looks like this isn't a good firewood tree, um, because mistletoe, and that's what this, these clumps are, it's dwarf mistletoe in these clumps. Um, it, it stops the, the, the really good growth of trees so they, they hardly ever get very big and they infest the, the other younger trees and the younger trees just kind of do nothing and you get these big wolfy things and these little spindly trees. So if this is my mistletoe kick, um, <laughs> mistletoe is good for the forest if it's in moderation. But just like any disease, if it's left to, to take off rampant, um, you would get this really um, unhealthy forest. So a good combination, a good um, combination of, of disease and healthy trees is, is what we want. And um, this is on uh, national forest ground. And um, one of the landowners, uh, I know him really well, he says, hey, Matt, I've got some great grays in my house. And Bang, the light goes off, it's, it's March. And I said, keep me updated in a month. So he comes back and says, hey Matt, the great grays are still there. And now it's May and I'm getting really excited because I know that they're starting to really hone in. And I said, well, go out and find the nest for me. So <laughs> lo and behold, most people again would walk right by this tree not think anything of it. Uh, and right there, is that is a chick now this platform the, the nest is actually right here I don't I don't believe this was actually ever a, a abandoned nest I think this was a pure uh, mistletoe clump that just happened to be um, what they wanted and everybody's seen a mistletoe clump before they they grow perfect flat tops a lot of times and if you ever see one just take a look up because because you might see this guy poking up uh, also underneath, look for stuff like whitewash, feathers, and, and so forth. For the most part, they, they won't defecate um, very much right around the nest, and that's to, to alleviate any you know, predation and bring predators into the nest. But I've got a picture that, or a video that um, shows, uh, they'll start, the owlets will start uh, coming out to the edge and defecating over right out a week before they, they fledge. So, um, they just can't um, hold it in anymore. <laughs> a female, they won't um, defecate or regurgitate pellets anywhere close to the nest for the most part. There are some old abandoned nests, that old one I showed you earlier did have some pellets underneath it. So if you're on your property or out in the forest and you want to, you know, see some um, evidence, you, you know, you see that there might be a tree, you think there might be a, a nest under, just take a look at your feet and look around for owl pellets. I think everybody's probably dissected a pellet in some their science classes. So, you know, a little gray regurgitated uh, pellet with bones in it. Um, or you might find some whitewash, which is, uh, looks like, you know, seagull poop or something like that, um, underneath the tree. 